Hello, 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 everybody. My name is Steve Ford. Welcome to your English lesson. Today, we've got a great lesson to help you expand your vocabulary. So, are you ready? Let's go. Many people reach a certain level of English and they feel like they're starting to be on some kind of plateau. And here, this lesson is going to help you to expand your vocabulary, not just for your work, but also for general life. So here's your opportunity to take a quiz. You can leave your comments. I will be happy to read them. And we're going to be doing a quiz to help you determine what side of the spectrum, what side of the line you sit. And our first word is egocentric and on the opposite end, selfless. So these are words that you might hear more in a job interview, in a formal setting. And if we go to egocentric, it means somebody who is selfish. It's that person, me, me, me. Well, that's enough about me. Let's talk about me. That's egocentric, selfish, me, me, me. On the opposite end, we have someone who is selfless. Now, that's kind of a high level word, selfless. But you could also use kind or caring. So that's my first question for you. Between these two words, are you closer to egocentric, closer to selfless? Are you more in the middle? Think about it and let me know in your comments. Let's go to the next one. Now, some people are very competitive. It starts when we're kids, when we say, my dad's stronger than your dad. My bike's bigger than your bike. My house is bigger than your house. And so on and so on. So you let me know, are you a competitive kind of person? Now, this really makes a difference if we're talking about your work, your career, your job. Maybe you are competitive. Many people have told me that they have a healthy competition with themselves. For example, let's say that you run 10 kilometers and it takes you an hour. Well, then maybe you try to beat your own record. That's a healthy competition. So you let me know, are you competitive at work or uncompetitive? Where are you there? Or maybe you're more in the middle. The next two that we have here is flexible on one side or adaptable. And then on the other side, we have inflexible. You could say it that way, inflexible. Or you could say somebody who is obstinate. Obstinate is a high level word. A lot of people would only use that in a more formal setting. You could use the more day-to-day -day one, which would be stubborn, somebody who's stubborn, somebody who's like a mule. And it's really hard to get them to do anything, to change their opinion, to go where you want them to go because they already have an idea of where they want to go. So let me know, are you more in the middle in terms of your personality between flexible and obstinate or stubborn? Are you more to the left? A lot of people told me that they are very flexible and adaptable. Now, some people, they make their decisions, the big decisions, those decisions that will determine the next step in your life, and they will base that decision on logic. They are rational. Other people are more intuitive. They go with their gut feeling. Gut, of course, means your stomach. So you have this feeling. And some people, not all people, they will even make business decisions based on their intuition, maybe supported by some logic. So what kind of person are you? I would really like to know if you're somebody who's more logical, rational, or if you're somebody that's more in the middle, or maybe you use a little bit more of your intuition, your intuitive. The next one we have here is open and discreet. 
open and discreet. So somebody who is open in this case, it means that they don't hide things from people. They're like an open book. And that's a great idiom. Somebody who's very open. If you wanted to use a more formal word, you could say forthcoming, but that's very formal. On the other side, as I said before, we have somebody who is very discreet, discreet. So this is somebody, maybe they tell, they have friends who tell secrets to them, don't tell anybody, and they don't. They clam up. They are very closed mouthed. Next, we have aggressive and gentle. So when I think of somebody who's aggressive, I think of somebody who's hot headed. This means that they not only get angry easily, they attack easily like a pit bull. On the opposite end, we have somebody who is gentle. That would be this kind of dog. Yes, like a deer, very gentle. If you want another day-to-day -day word for gentle, you could say, and this is used quite a bit, it's very popular in slang, is chill. Yes, chill. So if somebody is, oh, that guy, he's, he's super chill. That means that they're gentle, they're laid back. So where are you on the scale? Are you sometimes more toward the aggressive side? Some people have told me that they need to be aggressive for their work or maybe to defend their family. But maybe you're somebody who is more on the gentle side, somebody who's more chill. Last but not least, we have daring. And then on the opposite end, we have cautious. Daring might be a new word for you. I'll give you another word that might be new for you, which is bold. Bold. Not bald, but bold, like with an O sound. And daring, bold, a risk taker, somebody who's gutsy. This is somebody that likes taking risks. They don't have a problem taking risks like jumping out of an airplane, skydiving. And then on the other end, we have, as I said before, cautious. Notice how I pronounce this, cautious. If you want to visualize it like that, cautious, great, to help you learn to pronounce it. Other words you could use, wary. And if you want to use a collocation, you could say playing it safe. So I don't know, you let me know. Sometimes, even when we're younger, we tend to be more of a risk taker. We tend to be more daring. And then as we get older, maybe we start to slide into the middle, or maybe we start to go in the direction of being somebody who's more cautious, wary, playing it safe. Let me know in your comments. Discussion. Do you have a friend whose life is an open book? Is there anyone in your family who is stubborn? Can you think of a situation when they were really hard-headed? Do you have a friend who is super chill? Is there anybody in your family who is hot-headed? How do you deal with them? Have you ever done something daring in your life? Would you do it again? Okay, everybody, I hope that this lesson is going to help you to improve your vocabulary. In case you haven't done so, give this video a like, and you can always subscribe to my channel, watch more videos. You can follow me on my social networks, Hopefully, I will make a quiz for this soon, and you can practice it on my website. And I look forward to seeing you in my next English lesson. Bye for now.